Hello family, I saw a vision of a beautiful beehive, just golden, well crafted and put together. I saw one bee coming with their stingers out, then two, then three, then there's a swarm of bees coming to attack with their stingers. When I came out of the vision, I had a sense the beehive was Father Derek and I in our relationship. We've been having the most sweetest time between me and him, working together well and being on one accord, and I knew this was a warning of an attack coming. He was getting a series of dreams also concerning us in spiritual warfare attacks. I then pulled the Raymond message from Mother Claire, assignment of division. I thought, oh, oh, okay, Lord, help us with your grace to get through this. Sure enough, in the days to come, there were various misunderstandings. Jesus then told me the bees are coming. You'll get stung, but do not frail around. Don't react, but respond in love. When I heard that prompting from the Holy Spirit, I thought, interesting. You are told when you see a beehive and bees or a hornet's nest and hornets round, be still. Don't try to swat them. It only causes them to go in a frenzy and you get stung more. Boy, did I get stung. <laughs> that week I got offended at one of the intercessors and had all sorts of thoughts of judgments and presumption in my head as you guys heard the message. I found myself in a storm, frailing my arms needless to say. I fell the test and was in a fire. The Lord kept giving me beautiful rhemas, letting me know that we would have victory over this onslaught coming against us in this ministry. Then received a message from Mother Claire. They were getting hit with this on the mountain refuge as well. The enemy was on assignment to divide, conquer, separate, strategic relationships for good. So I felt like to share this repost from Mother Claire where Jesus shares with us what to do in the midst of this attack. I can't imagine that I'm the only one going through this because when one suffers, we all suffer. So I feel many are having little misunderstandings, offenses, frustrations with those around them. And Jesus wants us to know it's an assignment of division. Don't give in. Say I'm sorry to one another. And sometimes you're going to have to give grace and space. I know the directive Holy Spirit gave me. So you don't allow hot heads to prevail. Give one another or the person you're at odds with grace and space. And in time, come together when things have cooled down. Speak in love. Listening, trying to understand where they're coming from. And forgiving one another. So be on guard, family. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Conquer this assignment with great patience and brotherly love. Pray for us as we pray for you. Hear Jesus' message to Mother Claire, Assignments of Division. My very precious ones, the Lord has been giving me the same rhema from our website for three times this week. This is the rhema that has a picture of the big rock with St. Francis praying on the left and St. Seraphim praying on the right. And it says, carved into the rock, may they be brought to complete unity. Wow. Now, it's very unusual for me to get a random rima that's exactly the same three times in one week. And I've been asking everyone, is there some kind of divisive spirit going around? Do you feel a spirit of division? And no one's been able to put their finger on anything. But I do remember I've gotten sideways in communications a couple of times with my husband and with a couple members of the community. And we were having difficulty explaining what we were saying. It wasn't an attack or an argument. It was just difficulty in communicating because I would say something and they would hear something different. And that is a classic tactic of the enemy to cause problems. So if that happens to you, it is not your imagination. It is definitely deliberate on their part. Now I understand this was a warning. There have been problems with two-way communication with each other. Dear ones, this is a curse assignment to divide the community and turn one another against each other. And that is so typical after Halloween. There is nothing that should come between us to cause us to lose our peace and joy and find fault with one another. But it happens sometimes. And if we're quick to repair it and recognize it immediately, what a difference that makes. But I've observed several people getting crossways with each other, including myself, over nothing. It is most certainly a nest of demons sent to cause resentment 
impatience and bitterness. Because of that, we must be very, very careful to listen to one another and respect one another's requests, as well as to be sure that we repeat back what we heard because the demons are twisting words coming from out of our mouths going into the other person's ear. It's not anything serious, it's the little things. For instance, I failed to communicate how I wanted a hermitage restored and now a wall has to come down because a window was left out. This was my fault. But I pray that the inconvenience and anger it might have caused someone else will not conceive a bitter seed in the hearts of those who work so hard to help us. I hope they will forgive me. In another situation, there was confusion over a shopping list. A very little thing, really. But it started to get tense because we couldn't clarify what we were saying to each other. This is Satan's attempt to ruin relationships, cause frustration and bitterness, and ultimately a crack in our foundation of brotherly love and humility. Several other smaller situations have occurred with the same problem, and now I see why it was a pattern the Lord was warning me about. Complete unity means no disagreements, no confusion, no resistance or strife, and that is the norm around here, believe it or not. The enemy is trying to make a crack that he can exploit to make more cracks that will divide us from one another and make living here together a very tense experience. Let's please love one another enough to be patient in communicating so the other person understands us well and we understand them. Let's be loving and kind when it comes to clarifying what we need to say. And above all things, let us guard the bond of brotherly love and make up over any disagreements. Don't let the sun go down on your anger or frustration. Lord, have you anything to add? Jesus began, Beloved, I was hoping you would catch the warning I was sending you in the ramus that kept reappearing on your computer. Yes, indeed, those who lack understanding have gotten together to curse you and everyone who is here. You all love one another and find joy in each other's company. That is detestable to them. Your very presence is detestable to them. And they want to separate you one from another and send some of you away. Yes, they have targeted certain individuals who they want to leave the community and leave you without a support system. And also, they will not have the comfort of a community around them. And so you too will eventually leave. What you have going for you is that you are all in the right place at the right time in my perfect will. And as long as you adhere to that standard and exercise great patience, kindness, and humility with one another, they will not succeed. I am protecting you as long as your hearts are right. Each of you is a gemstone glistening in my crown, and the interactions between you are beautiful to behold. There is so much genuine love between you all. Do you know how rare this is? Even in religious communities, sisters and brothers get underneath each other's skin. Long-standing resentments become strongholds of bitterness. But rather than clamming up when you're upset, you share your feelings and come to me asking for forgiveness and more grace to continue to be patient and love. I am so very proud of you. Please continue the good work. Your awareness and self-control have protected you, but mostly it is humility and brotherly love towards one another that is your greatest protection. When you get tired or are in pain, these are the times the enemy tries to cloud your thinking with negativity 
that leads to alienation. But because you recognize it and come to me immediately, it doesn't stick and turn into bitterness or a rift. Each of you are so precious to me, and the way you love one another brings me great comfort. Continue to stay vigilant, because this is a major attack that is coming against the community. And if you continue to recognize your own faults and correct them immediately, these attempts against you will fail. I bless you now with abundant brotherly love and self-sacrifice to help you through this season. Understand, these are offerings for your nation as you continue to deny yourselves sweet and pleasant foods. I am so proud of all of you for being willing to apologize and comfort one another. <laughs>